What's up guys? Today we're going to continue our adventures into Django and talk a bit about the client server model. So the client server model basically um, consists of this very one-way relationship where the client makes a request from the server and the server sends a response. So it's kind of like the client is just always kind of bugging the server, do something for me, and the server is just always waiting around, you know, to take this request and send a response back, never, never asking for anything in return, such a selfless server. So client-side code, we've been going over this all semester. So client-side code is code executed by the browser, okay? These are these are on the machines that you're generally using that be made to be used um, directly by users, okay, by end users. Uh, and it, and for web servers, okay, this is this is going to be, um, or sorry, for web code, this is going to be code executed by the browser. So this is gonna include HTML, which is just how to, uh, how to specify content, CSS, how to specify the formatting for that content, and JavaScript is going to actually allow you to program um, your browser, okay, including sending requests with a bit of an aid um, from a, from jQuery um, to make things a bit easier for us. So server side code is code executed on the server, okay. So there's there's kind of three things I want to split up here about the code, different sort, sorts of code you might be executing on the server. So there's web servers and um, a lot of people, they don't really distinguish the difference between like a web server and like a web application server or script, okay? So web servers, what a lot of people refer to web servers, these are things like Apache and Nginx, LightTDP, okay? These are made to just kind of route requests from a specific URL to serve specific resources or to route those requests to a web application server which is a server or a script that is actually going to programmatically handle those requests. So, so that these, these web application servers, they're gonna have a lot more overhead involved with them, okay? Um, so a lot of the time, like you'll use a web server that are really good at handling a lot of traffic and routing things around really quickly, okay? Um, but they're more limited in nature. A web application server is actually gonna process data from requests and um, do something with it, like interfacing with a database. And a database uh, is going to allow you to actually um, store structured data, okay, on the server um, inside different ways. So the different examples of this are stuff like SQL or MongoDB. Um, we'll go over how to use uh, databases with Django inside this course, which is gonna involve something called object relational mapping. Ooh, we'll get to that later. So. Where does the client get its client code from? Well, the server. So uh, when you when you go to your browser and you type in something like, let's go to google.ca, okay? This is going to make a request, send an HTTP request to a server somewhere, okay? To Google server. It's gonna get brought processed by a DNS first, um, but let's just forget about that for the moment. Um, eventually it'll end up at one of Google servers is gonna receive this HTTP request and it's going to send an HTTP response back. And in that instance with the Google.ca, it's gonna send back a resource, an HTML page, okay? And that will be your um, Google page that you like to make searches from. So in Django, um, Django doesn't really serve static files, which we'll talk about later, but um, we do have to write some code if we want to make a view that's going to give us an HTML file. So to do this, let, let's go um, Let's go to our code. So I've set up a GitHub repo that I recommend you all clone. So um, it's this Django underscore templates repo. And I'm gonna be keeping code inside here that basically kind of like finalized versions of um, the code we'll work through in each of these uh, tutorials and lectures. So I recommend you clone that repo. And if you go into that repo, there's a project already set up, a simple app, okay? And the simple app project is basically a recreation of the Django project, just with a few different names. In fact, I think simple app is the only different name 
Uh, it's basically a recreation of the Django project that we made last time. So to save us some time, I'm going to, I'm going to work from this project. Okay. Uh, that already has some work done. So basically if I run this project done right now, Oh, and I made the silly mistake that I keep telling you guys not to make by of not activating my environment. So let's activate the Django environment. And let's try that again. Let's run the server. Okay, so if I run that server now, and let's go to localhost 8000 slash e slash mac id slash hello. Okay, so from this location, hello world is served. So if we go into this code and remember how that happened, let's go to our views.py. So in this example, I was saying the Django project slash home slash views.py, okay? Um, we're gonna go to, inside this project, the equivalent is going to be our um, simple app slash hello. So hello is the app that we set up um, slash views.py. Okay, and the code we were using before was a very hacky thing that you should never do. We literally just put an HTML document inside of a string and just re and just return that. So uh, let's do this the proper way. So we're gonna import a function. So I'm gonna put from the Django, actually I'm gonna activate my condo environment here. So I get autocomplete from the Django um, dot shortcuts import render okay and i can delete this line and now instead of returning just an http response object i'm going to re i'm going to use a function okay that's going to return um, an http response object for us okay but it's going to do some work for us it's more work than that um, it's going to so you're going to give it the request okay and then you're going to give it a file name We'll call it hello.html, okay? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna find this file, this hello.html, and it's going to um, parse it, it's gonna put it um, into an HTTP response object for us, okay? So this is infinitely better than what we were doing before. You can imagine as soon as you get larger HTML documents, uh, you don't wanna be putting them inside of a string, inside of a Python file, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, you, you wanna put them there in their own spot, their own HTML documents, and then you wanna be able to just reference them, okay, say, find this home.html file, like reference the path to them, and put it in there. So, the way Django works, the way Django does this, is Django is automatically gonna look for HTML files that are inside these templates directories, okay? Um, that now it's already set up in your settings so that whenever you put a templates directory inside a, a app directory, um, it's automatically going to look for HTML files inside there. So you have the one thing to note about this is generally a good idea. I'm not doing this in this example, but it's generally a good idea to further subdirectory um, these HTML files. So do something like templates and then put maybe the name of the app again, like home slash home.html. Just because DJ, what Django will do is it'll find all of these templates directories from like all of the apps in your project. It'll collect all of these files and put them in one place. So if there's, if there's files with the same name, like overlapping on, on each other, um, they'll overwrite each other. So we, we do wanna avoid that, but screw that for now. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna live dangerously a little bit and I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna make this directly templates. I'm gonna put this home.html there, okay? And just an example of some, of some sample HTML. I'm gonna use this right here. Okay, so let's do that. So our, so let's close the server for now. So our app is hello app, okay? So it's cd into hello. And let's create a new directory templates there. Okay. So simple app, hello. And we have a templates directory. 
and let's create a file template and let's create a file hello.html right now. Okay. And let's give that file an open. Let's open that up. So it's going to be a simple app hello template hello.html. Okay. And let's just copy and paste that code that I gave you from the slide set. Now, two things to note. Um, so um, all this all this code is going to display is homepage. Okay, it's going to have a title homepage, and I took the liberty of importing. Whoops, I took the liberty of importing. Took the liberty of importing AJAX. Okay, because we're going to we're going to want to use it later. Okay. Okay, so now that we have this HTML file here, we can actually run the server. So let's go back. So run the server in case you guys forget. Let's go back to where we have our manage.py file. And we're gonna make sure we have our Django environment activated. We do. We're gonna run Python manage.py, run server, localhost 8000. And remember, if you're on, uh, if you're trying to run this from the Mac One X83 server, you use localhost in a specific port. Okay. Okay. So now we're running this, and now if we go back and reload here, oh no, what happened? So let's investigate. Server responded with a status of 404 not found. Hmm, that's not good. Let's take a look at what's happening. So it's not it's not finding um is it not finding hello.html? Oh yeah, that's just the fave icon. That's not an issue. Looks like it's not finding. Oh, it returned a status of 200 when it did a get from here. So that should be fine. So what is our issue about here? Let's, let's investigate this. Let me check our own code, make sure this is right. So we imported hello.html, we have render here. Okay, this is all fine. Did we put hello.html in the right spot? So simple app, hello templates, hello.html. Okay. Did we save hello.html? Properly save. I think it might have just not been properly saved. Oh, I'm not running the server anymore. Yep, it looked like it just wasn't properly saved, so it couldn't it couldn't be found. Okay. Um, well, that was a little silly, but. Now you have an idea of how you kind of solve this sort of problem. Like it couldn't find, um, so now you see it, it, it was able to find that file, so it couldn't find the file. So we just had to make sure was the file in the right spot? Was it actually saved there? Apparently it wasn't actually saved there. Okay. So now we're able to serve um, some HTML file. Now, we also want to be able to serve static assets with these HTML files. Okay, so these these are things um, that do not change. So we'll, we'll talk about this later. So HTML files that Django is um, serving, uh, it it doesn't it it'll it'll often change them. Okay, it often won't serve them just as is. Okay, um, these other files are going to be stuff like JavaScript files, CSS files, images, videos. Okay, that we're often going to link to in our HTML file, um, they need to be put inside of a static directory, okay? So we're gonna go to the Django, 
and we're gonna get it to um, we're gonna let, let's close this terminal, okay? And the same place, just like so, we'll we'll cd into our into our app, and just like with the templates directory, we'll make a new directory static, okay? And um, in the, in this example, um, we cd we put an image inside there. Um, the other thing you can do is like CSS or something like that. Uh, but what we can get, we can get a little image. So um, we can just pull whatever image you want off of a server. So I'm going to pull one. Um, so I'm going to take an image, this little JPEG here, okay, and I'm going to CP it into uh, static. Okay, so now I have an image there, baby underscore Yoda dot JPEG inside static. Okay, so now if I want to include that image, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference, I, I'm going to have to first put this pragma for load static before and so I'm going to use this curly braces dollar sign, uh, or sorry, curly braces percentage symbol, um, brackets. Uh, so, so I'm going to first make sure I load static, and I just have to do this once before I use any static items, okay, and I'm going to reference the image, and but I'm going to reference the source but instead of like referencing like a full path to a source like I usually would in HTML files I'm gonna use this static pragma and I'm just gonna reference it in the same way that I would reference like those templates before where um, if it's if it's just in a static folder like on its own I can just reference the image on its own if it's in the subdirectory of the static folder then I'll reference like the relative path from that static folder okay so I can take this bit of code here and let's add it to the bot to the body of my web page. So I'll add it underneath the home page. And actually what I'll do to make this look better, let's put it inside an HTML. Okay. And then let's insert. Load static, and we'll reference static, and we're gonna reference maybe our image is called baby yoda.jpg. Okay, so now let's go back and let's run the server again. Yay, and it's loading our web page with our image. Now, I should note that um, the Django doesn't actually serve static asset assets. Um, this works when you're running like a local host, but when you're running, um, on an actual server, uh, what you you need to actually ha have the assistance of another web server, like an actual web server, not a web application server, like Nginx or Apache or something, to serve the static files for you. So this will include that if you're trying to run this on Mac One X A Three, this won't work because you need you need an extra step to tell it to like copy all of these um, static files to somewhere where. Nginx, okay, because that's the web server I have set up on the Mac One X A3 server, um, where Nginx will serve it for you, okay. Uh, but let's ignore that for now. We'll get back to that later. So um, that's how we include an image. Let's say we want to include some JavaScript. So JavaScript also counts, okay, as a static asset. So, so you're gonna have to load it, um, j just like you would like any like an image or something else, okay. So uh, and you're gonna have to put it inside of a static folder, just like before. So let's say um, we wanna add some JavaScript. So we take this code here. So we put it, let's put it beneath our, um, our 
image here. And actually, we don't need this load static because we already did that up here. So we already loaded static here. So we're going to have a button now, and we're going to have a script at the bottom of our body that references a home.js. Okay. A home.js file. So before we try and run this, we're going to actually need to add that JavaScript file. So let's put that JavaScript file in the same location that we would have put um, our image or anything inside of the static folder. So in static, let's add home.js. Okay, so in the static folder, we're gonna add some JS code, some JavaScript code, okay? And this is why we imported um, jQuery earlier. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use jQuery to select this button, okay, really to select any button, and when you click it, it'll hide this image, really hide any, any image. This is some pretty hacky uh, jQuery code, but we're, we're not focusing on jQuery right now, so it'll do. Okay, so we'll save this, and um, now we should be able to run the server, so everything seems to be fine. When I press save, server's still running. So, we load this now I have this button let's click the button the image disappears and you can even see if I go to source here that yep it was able to find that home.js static file okay so we, we've already been making HTTP requests. There are a number of different request methods, but we're only going to focus on two for now. Okay, get and post. These are these are the um, very important ones that um, everybody needs to know about. So, get request is actually the type of HTTP request we've been doing all along. Whenever we retrieve an HTML page, okay, uh, one one of the um, key points to what it invo is involved in the get request is that it should have no side effects and everything involved inside it can be seen inside of your URL. Uh, the other type of request that we haven't been using yet is a post request. Okay, uh, this is often used to send um, file uploads or to send like form data, um, so particularly uh, password sort of data. So. The, some of the differences between get and post request. So when get sends a request, all of its parameters, like all of the data it's sending the server can be seen in the URL. So it's just the URL. Whereas a post request is actually sending data inside of its body, okay? A uh, get request only works with ASCII characters. This can work with any type of data. A get request gets cached, okay? So if you send the same request twice, the same get request twice, um, it won't even bother sending the second one to the server, uh, uh, not necessarily unless the cache got um, cleared somehow. Okay, it'll, it'll just look up the browser cache. Um, get requests are not safe for passwords. You, you should have guessed this just by the fact that I was saying that everything is shown inside of the URL. Okay, whereas post requests, safer for passwords. Okay, um, not necessarily safe depending on how you do it, but safer for passwords. Uh, the get request should cause no side effects. And this is this kind of follows from the fact that it's gonna cache the response, okay? Um, the post request, I should have also put this as safer to, to cause side effects, okay? Okay, so um, the before we get into get requests, um, we should talk a little bit about the query string syntax, which is used for get requests. So this is a way of specifying parameters as um, key value pairs separated by like its key is equal to some value ampersand next key is equal to some other value another ampersand and so on and so on and so on okay so these um, so when you um, make a get request for a certain URL what you usually do is you specify the URL path okay and the server whatever server is um, routing to that path if there's then a question mark, it'll parse in query syntax, following the syntax, the um, key value pairs that come afterwards as the arguments being provided to the request to this path. Okay, so this is the default syntax used by this line type. 
um, MIME types, also known as media types. They're good things to be aware of. We won't really go into them right now, but um, you'll see them specified in um, the headers of requests and responses. Uh, they're, they're content format specifiers. So, so they kind of just specify what the content is. So we can kind of ignore them for now, but they're a good thing to just kind of be aware of. So I'm just pointing them out to you. Okay, so how does Django, we're just gonna focus on today, how Django handles incoming HTTP requests, okay? So uh, in our view, we can define, well, well, first of all, we can check what kind of request, if there is a get or a post, by looking at the request.method attribute. So keep in mind, all these views, when we defined a, a view, so if we go to our views.py, let's say it's inside below, these, these views take a request, which is in actually an HTTP request object. Okay, so HTTP request object. I can actually specify since I'm using um, a version of Python beyond 3.6, I can actually put the type as a type hint. So I can actually kind of manually specify here. Python won't enforce this as it doesn't have static type hinting, but I can specify here that, well, this is supposed to be a HTTP request object and this is supposed to return an HTTP, sorry, not request, um, response object. Okay, and this object will have an attribute method to it and you can check if it's a get or a post with this object. Okay, so um, there are two attributes that you can access here, get and post. So you should check generally um, which method the request is, if there is a get or a post. And then depending on which method the request is, you'll have access to .get or .post here, which are basically dictionaries, which you, you can use them just like dictionaries. They're technically this query dict object. You can um, take a look here for documentation on it, and it's specific to Django. But you can use them just like dictionaries for the most part. So I could do something like um, let's let's define uh, a little a little view to handle um, get requests. Okay, so let's let's pretend that um, we're getting a get request. Okay, and that get request is going to contain a name and an age. Okay, and we're going to return a response back an HTML response um, just with that same. We're just going to echo it back that name and age. Okay, so how would I define this? So I'm gonna do def get test. Okay, and I'm gonna say so name is equal to uh, request get. So this is gonna be this dictionary like object. So I can do something like get, just like I would with any dictionary, and I'll try and get the key name. And if there is no um, key name, then I'll default to returning no name, just a no name, okay? And I'll do the same thing with age. I'll, I'll say that there's two, there's two parameters. Okay, and then I'll make an HTML response, okay? I, I remember before I said this was hacky, but I'm gonna do it again just for the sake of illustrating um, what's happening, what we're doing, so name plus age, so you're probably wondering right now what I should, what you should really do in this situation, like if you did want to return an HTML page with this data that I received from the request, maybe I changed this data around a bit or something and I wanted to render it into a new HTML page, how would I go about doing that? And um, I'll explain how to do that in the next lab when we go over the Django templates. But for now, we'll just do it as this super hacky way.
Okay, so I'm saving. So um, I'm also, so now I defined a new view, so I'm gonna wanna route to it. So I'm gonna open up hello in the hello app. It's urls.py. So in the same file where I'm currently routing hello, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna route to, let's say get underscore test. And then I'll go to get underscore test. I should really call this something. I'm gonna change the snap a little bit. I should really call this get underscore test underscore view. Just for naming consistency sake. Okay, so now um, because I'm routing here, I should be able to go, um, let's go back. So instead of hello here, let's go to get underscore test. And if I just go here, yeah, see, I didn't actually give it any arguments. Like I did as a get request, there was no parameters. If I want to give it parameters, I'm going to have to put question mark name equals, let's say Kurt and ampersand um, age equals 14. Okay. And you can fiddle around with parameters here. So now the page is going to change relative to these parameters that I give inside of the URL. Okay, so that's a get request. Um, we do basically the same thing in the post request. Okay, so post, um, we're going to do it like we basically just copy, we might as well just copy this code. And really, all we're going to change in terms of how Django is going to handle post requests is. I'm going to access the post dictionary instead of the, the get dictionary. I'll call this post test view. Okay, and I'll go to my where I'm routing and I'll have the route to post underscore test. And that'll route to post test view. Okay. So this is a bit trickier to work with. If I just go to post test view now, so if I say post underscore test. Okay, it's the same thing as the get test before I specified the parameters. Okay, it's getting no parameters right now. So how do I specify the parameters? Well, now this is a bit of a trick. Um, I have to send it away, I have to send it a request Okay, with an with a body. So the standard way we would do this is through JavaScript or like jQuery or something like that. Um, I don't want to get into doing that right now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to use curl to do it. Okay, so I'm actually going to uh, so curl is just a command line program, and um, basically it's I'm going to manually um, send a post okay to this URL with this body. Okay, so to do this, um, I'm going to open up another terminal. Okay, and I'm going to copy that code. Okay, and so um, it kind of, when I paste it in, it automatically sent it, and I automatically got this back. So it worked just fine. And I can even see on the server, see, the server even logs that I got a post request and it sent back an HTTP response with status 200. So what was that status about? Um, 200 is the status you want to see. So 200 is status um, success. Um, anything within the range of 100, don't really worry too much about that um, informational response. 300 um, is also not too much of a worry. This is generally um, you just got redirected. Um, and this, this is the or the process for redirection. Sometimes um, servers just set up so that when you go to a URL, it immediately redirects to another URL. Um, 400 and 500, these are the status codes that you don't want to see. So 400 is a, a, an error occurred on the client side. Okay, we're seeing this 400 status code um, being printed out. Um, that, that means, uh, so usually in your JavaScript console, or something that means that um, probably Java made an error, or uh, JavaScript made an error, sorry. And if you're seeing um, a 500 code, then your server, 
made an error. So probably somewhere inside your Python code, a runtime error happened. Okay, so we're gonna leave that off for today. Um, next time, I'll show you how to send um, get and post requests from actual JavaScript. Okay, have a good one, guys.